As I arrived at the airport, I couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and nerves. I was heading to Tokyo for a solo trip, and it was my first time flying abroad. I made my way to the international terminal and looked for my airline's check in desk. After checking in and dropping off my luggage, I went through security and passport control. Finally, I arrived at my boarding gate, ready for my flight. As I waited for boarding to begin, I noticed a guy sitting across from me, typing away on his laptop. He looked up and caught my eye, flashing a warm smile. I felt a sudden jolt of electricity and looked away, trying to play it cool. As I waited for boarding to begin, the guy got up and walked over to me. Mind if I join you? he asked, nodding towards the empty chair next to me. I shook my head, and he sat down. I'm Taro, he said, holding out his hand. I took it, feeling a spark as our palms touched. I'm Sophia, I replied. We started talking, and I learned that Taro was heading to Tokyo for work. He was a photographer, and his company was sending him to shoot a campaign. I told him about my solo trip, and he shared some tips on where to go and what to see. As we talked, I couldn't help but notice how cute he was. His dark hair was messy, and his brown eyes sparkled when he smiled. I felt myself blushing, and I looked away, trying to play it cool. Before I knew it, the airline staff announced boarding. We stood up, and Taro grabbed his bag. Want to sit together on the plane? he asked, smiling at me. I nodded, and we walked onto the plane together. As we found our seats, I realized that we were sitting next to each other. I felt a thrill of excitement and settled in for the long flight ahead. As the plane took off, Taro and I continued to chat. We talked about everything from our jobs to our favorite foods. I was surprised at how easy it was to talk to him. As the flight attendants came by to offer snacks and drinks, Taro asked me if I wanted to share a bag of peanuts with him. I nodded, and we munched on the peanuts as we talked. As the plane hit turbulence, I grabbed Taro's arm without thinking. He looked at me and smiled. It's okay, I've got you, he said. I felt a rush of excitement at his touch, and I realized that I was having a great time. I couldn't believe that I had met someone so cute and charming on my solo trip. As the flight attendants announced that we would be landing soon, Taro turned to me and asked, Want to grab a drink with me after we land? I nodded, and we exchanged numbers. I couldn't wait to see him again. As we landed and exited the plane, Taro grabbed my bag and walked with me to the baggage claim. We talked some more, and I learned that he was staying in the same area as me. As we waited for our bags, Taro turned to me and said, I had a great time talking to you on the plane. Would you like to meet up for dinner tonight? I nodded and he smiled. I'll pick you up at seven? I nodded again and he said, I'm looking forward to it. See you tonight. That evening, Taro picked me up from my hotel and took me to a small restaurant in the heart of the city. We sat down at a cozy table by the window and ordered our food. As we waited for our meals to arrive, we talked some more. I learned that Taro was not only a photographer, but also a passionate traveler. He had been to many countries and had some amazing stories to share. I was fascinated by his adventures and listened with wide eyes. He was equally interested in my stories, and we found ourselves lost in conversation. Our food arrived, and we enjoyed a delicious meal together. The restaurant was quiet, and the atmosphere was intimate. I felt like I had known Taro for years, not just hours. As we finished our meal, Taro asked me if I wanted to join him for a photo walk the next day. He wanted to show me the city from a different perspective, and I agreed. 
We parted ways that evening, and I couldn't wait to see him again the next day. I felt a connection with Taro that I couldn't explain, and I was excited to spend more time with him. The next day, Taro picked me up from my hotel, and we set out on our photo walk. He showed me the hidden gems of the city, from secret gardens to street art alleys. We walked for hours, taking photos and talking about everything from art to music to life. As the day went on, I realized that I was having an amazing time exploring the city with Taro. He was knowledgeable, funny, and easy to talk to. I felt like I had found a new friend. As the sun began to set, Taro suggested we grab some coffee and rest our feet. We sat down at a cozy cafe and continued to chat. I learned more about his passion for photography and his dreams for the future. As we finished our coffee, Taro asked me if I wanted to join him for a group tour the next day. He had heard about a unique tour that explored the city's underground art scene, and he thought I might be interested. I agreed, and we parted ways that evening, both looking forward to the next day's adventure. The next day, Taro and I met up with a group tour at a trendy cafe in the artsy part of town. We were joined by a few other travelers and a local guide who specialized in street art. As we walked through the city, our guide showed us incredible murals and graffiti that I never would have noticed on my own. Taro and I stuck together, taking photos and admiring the art. At one point, we stopped in front of a massive mural depicting the city's history. Taro turned to me and said, I love how art can bring people together like this. I nodded in agreement, feeling grateful for the opportunity to experience this with him. After the tour, Taro suggested we grab lunch at a nearby food truck festival. We spent the afternoon trying different cuisines and laughing together. As the day came to a close, Taro walked me back to my hotel. Thanks for joining me on this adventure, Sophia, he said with a smile. I smiled back, feeling happy and content. Thanks for showing me around, Taro. I had a blast. As I packed my bags to leave Tokyo, I couldn't help but feel a little sad. I had grown attached to the city and its people, and I knew I would miss Taro. Taro and I had exchanged numbers, and he had promised to stay in touch. I hoped that our friendship would continue, even after I left Japan. As I made my way to the airport, I received a text from Taro. Hey, Sophia. I'm going to miss you. Let's keep in touch and plan another adventure soon. I smiled, feeling happy and grateful for the friendship we had formed. Definitely, Taro. Take care and stay in touch. As I boarded the plane and took off into the sky, I looked out the window and thought about all the amazing experiences I had had in Tokyo. And I knew that no matter where life took me, I would always treasure the memories of my time in Japan and my friendship with Taro.